Ah, yes. We are back again with another sneak preview of a feature in focus. But this is really kind of a thesis thing. Uh, more a thesis thing than a focus thing. But the only real-world implementation of this new feature uh, exists in focus. So I'm going to show it to you in that context today. And what I'm going to show you is a new thing called modular content. And the idea with modular content is, let me just show you what it is, because that's probably going to be easier for you guys to understand. So whoop, there we go. All right, so modular content is this idea that this is a this is a just a post, uh, just a regular blog post, and this is it's the idea that we might want to put something unique. Uh, you know, after the post or somewhere else on the page, just a unique item on a particular post or page. So like, for example, maybe I'm doing a new promotion and I have a special email list or a segment of an email list that I want to, uh, you know, any signups, I want to go to this specific list and only from this page. So I would be implementing a unique signup form only on this page of my site. And there's various ways you could do this. You could do this programmatically like, uh, you know, by writing some code, having it hooked into place only on this page, and it only outputs on this page, ta-da. And then it has to be styled, has, so it looks right within the context of the design. That's pretty technical. I don't like that. Normal people aren't going to be able to do that. Another option with Thesis, you can actually, you know, hand edit a template. So you can go to your, your single template here, or a custom template, probably more likely, and then, you know, add... Uh, a special piece of content there, and then it would output. But the problem with some of these approaches, like this template-based approach, for example, is if I were to modify the single template and add some special text box after it, such as this one that you see here, that text box is going to appear on every post that's on my site. So that's not desirable. I only want a form to appear on this one page. So again, the question is, how do we do that? You can do it programmatically, like I said. That's that's not something that, that normal people are going to do. Another way to do it would be to create a custom template just for this page, put that special element in there, and then apply that custom template to this exact page. That approach works and isn't terrible, but it's not really desirable to have a new template, a completely new template, a custom template, when everything is the same except for this one thing. That is a uh, that's a snowflake outcome. That's a just that's a very end branch node. This is like one specific outcome that we would want. You've got your single post template that's going to output for every post, but on this one post, we want it to be just a little bit different. It'd be ideal if we didn't have to deploy that level of snowflake solution whenever we wanted one little thing to be different, such as uh, you know adding a, a unique signup form. So the question is. How can we do it? Well, I was working with somebody else uh, on their site, and he wanted to do exactly this. He wanted to deploy a custom opt-in form on like four different pages of his site. He's got like three or four forms that he uses, and he wanted to be able to pick and choose which one gets deployed, but without really the overhead of having to set, you know, specify a different template each time. And also, it's worth noting. Let's go into WordPress real quick and look at, like, if I'm editing this page, I say, okay, I want to apply a custom template with a special opt-in form for just this page. Let's go in and look at that. It takes forever to load when I'm recording a video. It'll load sometime today, we hope. There it is. Oh, it's Gutenberg. My God, no wonder it took 10 years. All right, so the deal is, if we want to choose a custom template, I have to move myself here. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so down here I can pick a custom template I want to deploy on this page. I can choose from the list. But the problem is if I specify that, and then let's say in the future I change skins away from focus, which I would of course never do. Uh, if I were to do that, then this information that this particular WordPress page needs a different, uh, or you know, I want the the information that I want this particular page to have some sort of different display outcome is lost. So it, you know, whatever custom templates you have selected to, to show on a particular page, that, that, that information doesn't transfer when you change skins or change your design. Think about it. If you change your theme to a different theme, 
any template based information that you had you know with your content saying like okay on this page I want this particular template to display that information is lost but that is not ideal I have a piece of content and I know that with this particular piece of content I also want an email opt-in form associated with it so I need to have that association persist with the content regardless of what theme or what thesis skin I am running I don't want that information that link there to be dependent upon the design that link is really dependent upon the type of content so question is how do we solve this problem and the answer is modular content for thesis let's see what that looks like so the modular content in this case is just a unique email form or unique you know whatever whatever it is that we're trying to add on to this post without necessarily adding it to the body of the post because we might want it to display elsewhere on the page uh, it may not make sense to just be at the end of the post for example so how do we do that well we can go back over here and with modular content which is going to debut in thesis 2.8 we have a new little icon here in the WordPress dashboard for modular content so we'll go check that out what we can do is we can create little pieces of modular content just like you create a WordPress post but what's cool about this is that modular content doesn't uh, get any of the automatic WordPress treatments that every other you know post or page on your site gets so if you create a post or page you automatically get a published post or page to go with it you create it here you save it you go over here to the HTML side and there's a page to go with it with modular content that does not happen this stuff just exists in your content database it only gets used if you say hey I want to use this here so this is stuff that you can reference in a modular way so here I just have a little little bogus text I have some identifier here to call it modular content test I put some text down here so we can confirm whether or not this thing is working and there's one option with modular content and that is you can disable automatic p tags as you see down here uh, that is for if you're going to include like an email form or something like that you don't want WordPress applying its auto formatting stuff you just want that you know you want it verbatim whatever you stick in there is what you're going to get out so occasionally you the type of content that you're posting in here in your in your modular content uh, that might be a suitable option for that especially like I said if you got forms or anything like that so once you've created some modular content I just have one here for the sake of example once you've created that you can go over to your post or page and then you can select which modular content from your content database you would like to deploy on this page so you're creating an, a relationship or you're establishing an association between this piece of content and then this piece of modular content that you have created so we select it modular content test and then depending on what uh, thesis skin you're running it's gonna have different uh, and actually only focus is gonna have this for now uh, but you know a skin can specify output locations for this modular content there is a box within the template uh, in this case I have included this box after the content and also after the author description so it appears down there and uh, so that's the natural box location for the modular content box so that's where it will output and then there's other locations the top of the post box after the headline area before post content and top of the sidebar if a sidebar is present so we can move that around on the page depending on where we want it to display or how we want it to be visible to visitors and then there's also we can uh, we'll play with this in a second this HTML class this really gives us a quick way to change the way this looks when it's output so let's just we'll, we specified our modular content we'll just see what it looks like we'll save it and we'll see uh, where that outputs and what that looks like so here we go let's take a look alright we have our modular content now output uh, after the author description and after our content and before our text box um, as we saw we'll skip over here and look at it this way to do less loading during the video if we go over here we can see that we have we're just using the, the default output style which makes it look like a text box and as you can see it's green right now looks just like that other text box all right we can so right now we'll keep it green we're gonna move where it shows we're gonna move it to the top of the post box 
and give that an update and we can see how this works. Man, Gutenberg is slow, it's brutal. Anyway, all right, so we moved it to the top. So now we've got this modular content that we just deployed and we see that we can move it around the page to put it exactly where we want to make this page, whatever opt-in, whatever call to action we're putting in here, we can place that exactly where we want so it's most effective. That's cool. We can also change its look based on what Focus says uh, the pre predefined output styles are. So we can change it to a note, for example. And now it assumes the styling of a note, which in the focus context is just really a different color. Uh, so we could do that with note, alert, box, or text box. And that's really it. That is, that's really the deal. The deal is you define, so like types of content that are naturally suited to being modular content, email forms, like I said, calls to action. You might have different action buttons. Uh, maybe you sell three types of products, or maybe you're an author, you have three books, you might want to put a pitch for this book on this type of content, you have a different type of content where a different type of book is more applicable, you put a pitch for this book. Uh, you see you can do all of those things now without actually needing to deploy, create custom templates or deploy different templates on these, on you know your various pages. But what I like about this the most, and what I've already mentioned once, is this idea that now this content association has been established completely independent of your design. This, this post now says, I wanna use this piece of modular content. Now the output display, the way it looks, the colors and stuff that gets used, that's dependent upon the design, but the link, the association between your content and your modular content is what will persist regardless of the design you're using, and that is so powerful. You are setting up the content, the meat of your site. That's what's really important. Your design is not important. What's important is your content and what is displayed and the associations you are making because that determines how effective your website is in addition to you know, basic stuff like speed and usability. But that's huge. Now when you set up these advanced associations in your website within your content, uh, you don't have to worry about having needing to do that again in the future when your design inevitably changes. So that's just absolutely huge. And now we have a, instead of needing to use short codes within, uh, you know, within your content, for example, or, you know, needing to do anything that sullies your content database, we are not doing that. We are merely creating new types of content and saying, hey, this thing points over here. This is its buddy. This is a companion piece of content that we're going to want to output somewhere on the page. And that is such a simple, basic sort of relationship uh, but it is absolutely critical to being able to build a dynamic website with WordPress, something that matters and something that's actually maintainable over time. So many things. I, I've seen this so many times. This story keeps finding me. It's like the universe keeps sending me this exact same story. And it's people who have operated a website for some number of years. Uh, you know, somebody who's been doing, uh, doing this stuff three, four, five years. And what they run into is that they'll reach some level of success they will pay big dollars for a highly customized website to, you know, take their brand and their business to the next level, or so they think. And they build this huge Franken site, or whoever they paid builds this huge Franken site for them. But then when they go to change that or do anything in the future, there's a big update like Gutenberg, things change, things need to be maintained, things need to be updated, they need to be modified. Whenever that situation arises, it's almost impossible and it becomes extremely expensive, extremely difficult, extremely time consuming to migrate some of these uh, some of these things into the future. So for example, like instead of having this nice association between modular content and regular content, all this stuff was done through the context of the design. So then a new person who comes in and works on the site has to deconstruct what happened in the old environment and then recreate it in the new one. It carries a super high cost, takes forever to do, incredibly inefficient. It's just no way to run a website. And what I've seen time and time again is people spend 2,500 bucks, 5,000 bucks on a website, and they're really disappointed in the end. The performance is crappy. Uh, the flexibility of their website is crappy. And there's not these rich associations like the modular content one I've just described. Those associations don't really exist. 
Everything happens at sort of a code level. Everything uh, requires manual input. It's just a terrible, terrible way to operate a website over any length of time. And so modular content is an answer to this, uh, to this real efficiency problem that websites have. And this whole idea, that, uh, kind of the crux of this efficiency problem is, is stuff that gets implemented through a design, which is sort of a unique outcome, and stuff that lives in your content, which is the stuff that's supposed to live forever. Uh, your content is sort of the system, and the design is sort of just an outcome of that system. And if you want to operate your best at your highest efficiency now and be able to also make changes in the future, productive changes, ones that don't cost you a ton of money, ones that are easy to figure out, changes that are actually can be made by you without needing to pay somebody to do them, uh, this modular content type relationship is exactly what you need. This is exactly how you need to be operating if you want to have control over, like your email forms and your content, those are your assets. Your design is an asset too, but it is not nearly as powerful an asset as your content. You can take another design in the future and still convey your content. You still have the essence of what you are. Uh, but if you change your design and all of those critical relationships, that, like your email forms that are associated with these pieces of content and all that stuff, if those relationships break because you've changed your design, you know you you then see the reality that you know you you ran a bad system, and it's not your fault. Everyone in the WordPress space is running a bad system, an inefficient system. That's why the universe keeps hitting me with these messages of people who have these websites they've been running for two three years. And they run into a situation where they can't update, they can't, they can't maintain it, everything becomes too costly, and the whole thing just sucks, and it's demoralizing. Websites seem simple, because we just go to a URL and they show up, and they're right there, and it's just some information, it's some pictures, it's whatever it is. It seems easy, but the reality is we dig ourselves in these really deep technical holes by taking on all this technical debt by running crappy systems. And so... My software thesis and now focus, uh, they exist to combat these problems of running crappy systems. You know, focus is designed so you can run a website a long time without having huge headaches. And not only so you can run a website a long time, but so somebody like me or somebody else who's well versed in this systems type thinking can step into your website and help you out at any point in the future. If you run your stuff the right way, if you establish these sorts of relationships, these sensible relationships between content, modular content, and that type of thing, you, you are basically controlling the assets that are most important to you. And that way a designer, somebody who comes in and works on your site, isn't setting up relationships and stuff that aren't working for you in the long term. This gives you more control over the stuff that's most important to you in the long term. Even if you don't realize it's most important to you yet, there will be a day when you realize that what I'm telling you right now is the truth, and you'll be very grateful that you had a system to control the stuff that was important to you because that reduced your costs, headaches, worries, anxiety, uh, delays, all the stuff that just sucks to deal with. It's going to reduce all that stuff. All right? So coming soon to Thesis 2.8 and to the Focus skin, which is really the big deal moving forward, uh, you're going to see modular content, and we're all going to be running our websites a little bit smarter, a little bit leaner, and uh, achieving some outcomes that are going to make others jealous. You know, the, the ease with which we're going to be able to deploy these things is going to be remarkable. So we'll take another look at this one more time. We've got our... We've got our modular content here. I can move this around. I can deploy this on a one-off basis, and it's all using the same single template. So I can go to a different page, running the same template, and display a different piece of modular content in a different location, a location that might be more suitable for that piece of content. I'm achieving that level of flexibility using only one template and, and doing it all from the, the content production interface in WordPress. Even Gutenberg, you can do it from the Classic Editor. I like Classic Editor better now after using it for about a week. Uh, it's just faster. It's just faster. All my meta boxes are right there. Uh, it just works better. That's, that's, you know, it is what it is. Gutenberg's kind of clunky, uh, at least for now. Maybe it'll get faster in the future. Hopefully it does. But uh, regardless of whether you're using Gutenberg or the Classic Editor, you're going to be able to enjoy this new modular content for Thesis, and I uh, can't wait to see what you guys do with it. All right, peace.